marks of the trail, I uh, think. So, if you like this, follow this. You can actually start this trail for multiple villages. It depends on what it, whatever you want. But I personally started from a town called Cassiope or something like that. It's called. But uh, yeah, just see whatever you want to do. And you can also start from the south. It all depends on your choice, whatever you want to do. And I do have one recommendation. May is a great time to do this hike because I see all little flowers all over the hike. It's beautiful. So, and the temperature is also perfect, like 20 degrees. Not warm, not too cold. This is a good temperature. flower it is never seen anything like this before what a small natural wonder sorry I just love these small little new details <laughs> I'm a bit in shock because uh, usually there are no like there are vipers in Europe and I thought no like very really really venomous snakes and I just got attacked by a sand horned viper or something like that most deadly <laughs> venomous snake in Europe I'm not bitten but I felt something uh, hitting my shoe and then uh, I moved a bit quicker and I moved back and I saw a, v a viper great quite aggressive So uh, if you are going to watch out for this snake Oh, that was scary actually <laughs> Well, I also spoke to some locals regarding the snake story and they told me I just end up in the hospital that I, but I don't have to worry about dying. But uh, also ending up in the hospital is not a great thing, I think, doing a hike. But um, anyway, it was bad, uh, but just bad luck basically. Snake was there sunning, warming up and then he saw gigantic feet and it probably like uh, frightened him or scared it and he decided to attack me to... Uh, to defend itself, maybe. Maybe it's felt threatened. S story is, um, I don't blame the snake. Um, it felt threatened. It has the, it has its reasons. I just was in a bad position. I just have bad luck, so it's okay. But uh, yeah, it, it, it was scary. But don't blame the snake or anything like that. It was just bad timing. That's it. Just look at this wild camping spot. Isn't this beautiful? Perfect. Absolutely perfect for wild camping. No, but I did learn a valuable lesson about the snake attack. Try to investigate if there's any possibility of dangerous animals. That's actually a pretty smart thing to do. Because I didn't know this. I mean, Europe is overall pretty safe and there's like no dangerous animal here whatsoever. So, uh, besides some bears in the east. And uh, maybe some venomous snakes in Turkey. Yeah, but not Corvo. I didn't think about it actually. So, next time just try to google it or anything like that. But if you do get attacked by a snake, that's something I know from my study. Stay calm. If you are panicking, your heart is going to pump faster and the blood and the, ven the, bl the venom inside the blood will spread faster. So, stay calm. Try to go to some people or call the... Uh, just call the ambulance and you'll hopefully be fine <laughs> but don't panic we're very bad oh i'm so done with thermo rest to be honest <laughs> uh.
Uh, okay, so this is what happens. I just blew it up, like, almost full, what I usually do, Can I, then you sleep absolutely well. And then I woke up in the morning, I just stood, and then... And then this suddenly happens. Oh my gosh. This is pretty stupid. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. How am I gonna fix this again? Oh, this is so annoying. I just want to show you where you're walking. I mean, just look at those trees. Look at the shadows. Look at the sun going through the shadows. And all these flowers. It's just, really, it's just so pleasant to walk here, seriously. And it gives me this Italian, French, Greece like vibes. I don't know, but to, to flesh it, but it's just uh, really nice to walk here. Sleeping on a broken sleeping pad is not that comfortable to be honest. It was still okay, but yeah, I'm gonna go to the store. Maybe I can buy some additional stuff to make it more comfortable or just a new sleeping pad. And just a completely new sleeping pad. So, uh, more weight, great, because I'm gonna take this one with me. Maybe they can evaluate it and maybe I can get another replacement than the fourth one. It's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I mean, Firmers is excellent. Uh, customer service. I don't have any complaints about that. But I really do not know why it keeps happening. Why there is constantly this bulge or this bu this bubble thing in my sleep bed. I really don't know why. I really don't know. It's it's a really strange thing. I usually don't film a trail itself, but. Look how absolutely stunning, stunning it is here. Crazy. Look at that castle in the background, at least the ruins of the castle. That's pretty cool. Well, you see the blue, blue thing in my back? I bought a new sleeping mattress. What a shit ton of time it cost to get here and now I need to go back. Great, absolutely great. Pretty deep and cool. It's like an undersea cave. Pretty cool. 
I'm really starting to think this is my favorite hike because it's so beautiful. The, well, you saw the clips of the coastline. It's fantastic. And then these forests you walk through, it feels like you're walking in a fairy tale. The weather is perfect. And yeah, almost everything about the hike is perfect. Uh, very little road walking so far. And people are very nice. Uh, environment beautiful. Hike is very pleasant. The only thing that is a little bit uh, annoying sometimes are the flies, mosquitoes and uh, the scary snakes. But for the rest, it's almost perfect I guess. So this morning I was wild camping again obviously. and But it was a little bit like the same location as yesterday. So it wasn't that interesting to film it. But there were some people, they saw me and they really didn't seem to mind that I was wild camping there. So... I think it's okay here to wild camp. Just don't throw your trash in here or anything like that. Because that is kind of not great. And for the rest, I just realized that I'm how lucky I am during this whole hiking period. I mean, I just had a few days of rain. <laughs> it was all dry. Yay, much better than the GR34. Really much better. Well, I'm now in a place called Gianares. It's like all other small Greek towns, Greece towns, very cute, so nothing special. But uh, this view is absolutely mind-blowing. I'm now seeing a beautiful view absolutely beautiful and I see the trees I see the hills I see beautiful greenery I see a, I see a beautiful world filled with wonderful people seriously people are amazing but it also makes me and it, it, I'm so happy because of that I'm almost crying it's, it's we live in such a beautiful world it's insane but I do also worry about its future. People always may remain nice, but I do think the small group of people who will ruin it for everybody is getting bigger. But I do think that in the future that most people will still be nice, but I really do think climate change is gonna, well, threaten a lot of it. Because, for example, if there, I still see now a beautiful area, still very green, but I can also see happening that in the summer, for example, it will be very dry and there might be a fire, for example, and those odds will increase every year. I just read a report about uh, climate change that um, the one and a half uh, degrees is getting more and more closer and that the output of carbon dioxide only increased since, two, since, the, uh, since the agreement of Paris in 2015. So I really, yeah, I don't think people will be able to solve climate change. So we have to live with it. We have to we have to live with the worst uh, impact of it. And how is that world going to look like? I'm really curious about that. I want to figure it out. I really want to figure that out. Of course, you can never have a optimal view. You can only think about it. But still, it's it's worth a shot, I think. But I think. Now the world is gonna go enter a dark age, and after that, I think it will be better. I really think so. Oh, sorry, I just. I'm happy, sad, worried, and optimistic all at the same time, basically. And just, just look at the view I, I'm seeing right now. It's absolutely. It's, it's just, it just makes me so happy, and I'm almost crying because of it. It's so beautiful. Yeah, this is like a raw version of the clip and it's like this is just real how I'm portraying myself right now I'm just really happy and all of those other things I just said it's just it's, it's so insane yeah, just look isn't this 
I think we already live in heaven. I really think so. Look how beautiful the world is. It's insane. That's why I love hiking so much. You see so much more than other people um, can realize. So much more than with car or bike or whatever. And it's so accessible for everybody because it's not expensive. So I really, really love this way of traveling. It's really legit, I think, and fair. And everybody can do it. I really think so. But how good you are at it also depends on the age, your fits, this level, and so many other things. But I think still everybody can do it. I really think so. Shot, I guess, but ah uh, well, how do you put the light well? I I don't know, but anyway, it's so cool because there are like this flying box which gives light. I think it's pretty cool. Maybe some box to perform bioluminescence. I think it's called. Pretty cool. I was like, what the f what the hell is going on? And then I was like, oh wait, I uh, remember that documentary from uh, David Attenborough or something like that, where they mentioned it. It's pretty cool. It was a bit spooky at first, but uh, yeah, like the shot, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's cool. Hey, do I see it in the background? Oh no, 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 it's just a light. But yeah, it, this is random, but it, it was really cool. Maybe you see it? No, I don't think so, it's quite weak. Yeah, more and more starting to show up. This is really magical. See at least a few dozens of them, I think, yeah. What a weird light show. It's really beautiful. Absolutely. <laughs> I have the feeling I'm in some kind of movie. <laughs> oh, these surprises, I love it. Well, I was camped here this night, so again, pretty nice location, but pretty loud because over there, there's the road and there were a lot of dogs barking. So it was quite loud, but it was okay. It is pretty cool so far. This is the Holy Chapel of Ajos Nicolaos. And there's... Here, I'll show you. Here, there's water here. There is a garbage pin with a sign of uh, the Corvutriol on it. There are some benches to sit on. And after that, a little bit further, is a great wild camping spot. So, long story short... Great place for, for great place to stop right now. So uh, see tomorrow, I guess. Yes, this is the wild camping spot, by the way. Nice and flat. So it was pretty good spot on.
sitting at the bar and they saw I was coming from the north and the man told me that I was the first person in two years that started from the north because the starting point of the hike is in the south so typically me that I go um, outside of the flow <laughs> typically me oh that was kind of funny I was laughing out loud when I heard it and uh, the other people at the was was like well okay that's strange so that was pretty funny I think That tree right there is one of the oldest olive trees in the whole world. It's around 1100 years old. So that's pretty crazy. <laughs> At least, that's what I've read. According to maps.me, this tree is located in a place called Strohil or something like that. So now you know the location. People wanted that, so I put it in. I check later again, just in case. Look what a cute tree house that is. It's pretty cool. And over there there's also a little house. Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay, just another crazy store basically. Okay, so I had to go to the supermarket, but everything was closed obviously. Because of siesta or something like that. I'm not sure why. But um anyway, some lovely couple brought me to the town, but the way back was kinda of funny. I was I couldn't get a hitchhike, so I was walking. And then the last few hundred meters, a man, man popped up, and he was like, "Where have you have to go, my friend?" Okay, then I brought you, bring you there, no problem. I put your backpack on my on the top of the car. I'm like, "Okay, sure, why not? Just try it out." He said, "Okay, we go slow." And uh, well, my backpack on top, and uh, we had a nice little drive for a few hundred meters. Um, that was kind of funny, I think. And uh, now I'm on the trail again. I'm now finding a wild camping spot and sleep and cook something. Cook and then sleep something. Wait, cook something and then sleep. Yeah, that, that's it. I wild camped here tonight. But just a tip. If you wild camp here, there are quite a lot of mosquitoes in spring area. In the springtime. So, just keep that in mind. It's really annoying. Okay, usually I only show like the whoa moments. The, the natural places where I have this feeling of wow, I have to shoot this. But... The next clip I'm going to show you is also quite realistic about these kind of trails. It's nice, very nice, pleasant to walk, but um, nothing interesting. Because you see it like all the time and it's like, it's because of that it's not special anymore at a certain point. Still very nice though, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I mean there are still some beautiful flowers, but it's just like walking like this. Beautiful and all, but nothing really interesting after walking here for days. So, yeah. This is a more realistic approach of the hike. Not only the beautiful moments, but also like the more normal moments. But so far this hike th didn't really have any like boring parts in my opinion. Yeah, there was a bit of road walking back then, but I didn't like, I, di I didn't mind it because it was pretty calm roads and it was quite, I think uh, it's also okay to walk a little bit on the roads. Nothing that bad. It's nothing compared to almost at least. So it's, I don't mind that actually this time. So this trail is actually, wow. Still very great. So I wild camp on this trail, usually I would never do it, but I was told it was quite abandoned and it was quite hard to get here. 
and look at this view again. It's not bad. Not bad at all. It was actually my favorite wild camping spot because it was close to the sea. So there were not a lot of mosquitoes and not a lot of flies or other, any bugs. And you have a beautiful view and you're close to the beach. Ideal. Absolutely ideal. And there were like um, old logs where you can sit on. So ideal. Absolutely amazing. I might uh, go here again after Kavos to stay here for one or two days. <laughs> Maybe. Because this is a very good spot. I love it. Just to sit here on the beach, relax, just read a book or something. Because uh, tomorrow I'll be done with the trail, and uh, <laughs> then I have still have a few days left. So I don't know what to do yet. We'll see. But uh, tomorrow I booked an accommodation. It was really annoying to get uh, to arrange it because Booking.com made an error, so I didn't receive the booking. So I booked something else because uh, the booking I just done before that, I didn't. Uh, Receive a confirmation and it was already booked by somebody else. Maybe it was me, maybe somebody else. I don't know, but I booked another place just in case. So, uh, yeah. nice to have like a bed and a shower in <laughs> because I think I've walked camp for like a week or so now. So, that's nice. connection with nature because it's just I think it's the only thing in this world that can give us true peace sure it's it will be a irritation most of the time it will be an uncertainty most of the time it will always be a struggle with nature but when it is all of it is okay then it gives you this perfect sense of peace in your mind which is not the, be able to describe with words it's just <laughs> probably the best drug in uh, life, probably. No, but seriously, I'm now watching again. I feel the wind blowing in my face. I see all these beautiful flowers. I see these beautiful form trees. I see the beautiful blue, blue ocean. All types of trees I see. It's just... I see a cat there, lying there in the sun, enjoying life as well. Oh my god. One, nature's just wonderful. I just can't, I cannot explain it. I really can't. I'm not sure if you can see my tent or not, but it's over there and this is kind of cool I think here it's like a old construction of a building which is unfinished and uh, just look at the view <laughs> it's pretty insane Yeah, it's a pretty cool wild camping spot, I must admit. Really cool. And that's not all. If you... Here. Here's a staircase. And the view up there is beautiful. Let me show you. Just look at this, how beautiful this view is here. Insane. Absolutely crazy. So I'm now in a place called Gardenos. Usually the hike goes inland here. But I've decided to do that tomorrow and today I'm gonna go to Kavos through the coastline. And I'm gonna show you why, because the coastline here is beautiful. And I do not understand why they do not make the route through the coastline here. I really do not understand. Here, have a look. Well, that plan went badly. There wasn't really any trail. At least I followed the trail and it was really poorly maintained. And then I asked some woman and they told me there wasn't any trail. So I thought, okay, then I just go through the mountains. 
but uh, still want to reach Kavos quite sooner than now, otherwise it's like still day of walking. And I want to have a little resting day actually. So tomorrow I'm going to finish the Corvo Trail and I'm going to go through uh, the mountains a bit. It really doesn't matter where you walk on Corvo, it's always beautiful, it seems like. I just took a random trail and it's pretty, pretty beautiful. I'll show you. Well, the light is kind of freaked up. Ah, shit. Okay. Maybe it's still funny to put this in. One of the most beautiful bays I ever saw in my entire life. Still, number one was uh, the Cathedral Cove in New Zealand from the film of Narnia. But um, here, I maybe have a clip of it so I can show you in this video. But um, okay, maybe you saw it now. It's uh, it's that was really beautiful. It was like a fairy tale. But this one was also like really beautiful. Here, isn't this remarkable? They cut down a tree and out of the tree comes another tree. Here, this is so strange. The regenerate the capabilities of the trees are pretty insane sometimes. So this is basically Kavos. Just some stores and restaurants, clubs, pubs. That's basically it, with beach. Oh, really nothing that special really, it's a really touristic spot and everything is built for those tourists, <laughs> that's basically it. One thing I do like about uh, Kavos, it is the cheapest um, place in uh, Corvo. Places here you can stay for 20 euros a night and it's actually in generally speaking cheaper than other places in Corvo. Also the food here is cheaper, so it's better. <laughs> now, okay, so just started walking again, I started from Kavos and I'm now going to Spa Terra. There's where the trail begins again, and then I'm gonna walk to Gardenals, and then the trail's over, basically. So I don't know how many kilometers, really. Really don't know. But to be honest, I'm tired. Really tired. It's so hot. And I've already walked, I think, 1500 kilometers or something like that. So, yeah, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, still enjoy it, but it's uh, getting tougher, to be honest. But it makes sense, I guess, after such a long journey already. This is the reason why I don't like to keep animals. Because they're not free, they still have to be caged in. This is still a very dramatic example, but the idea is the same. Keeping animals in prison without their will, with, against their will, I don't like it. I'm now in a town called Lefkimi. I'm walking in the streets where they send you. It's the official Corvo trail and I kind of don't understand why they made the trail up here. It's kind of boring to be honest. It's just one road through not a significant, important or beautiful town. So maybe to resupply, I don't know, but it's kind of boring. Here, this is uh, basically it. Probably the most boring section of the trail to be honest. <laughs> the area before this town is quite pleasant of walking, but uh, I saw like four snakes. <laughs> it's kind of insane really. Okay, that was a really cute section of the time, I must admit. But uh, this tree, it's insane. It's like two and a half by two and a half meters uh, thick in diameter. And the people told me over there it's like 200 years old. I believe that. It's insane, this tree. It's the widest tree I've ever seen in my life. It's insane.
For example, look at the grass. You can wild camp here, but I'm not gonna do it. Purely because of the snakes. But there's one thing here I would not do. Because um, a few days back when I started the hike, I met some people who, was, who were sleeping outside. That's something I wouldn't do, because if there is a snake active and it will go to you and you're scared and you make a sudden move, then the snake can bite you. That's something I wouldn't do. Also, also very slim, but those odds are higher than sleeping in tent, because still you're concealed in the tent. If you have... If you have like if you're just sleeping in your inner tent, then you probably know and hear that something is coming in. You make a movement, the problem the snake's probably gonna go away. Or you can think of some kind of solution. But if you're just sleeping outside and you have not any protection, yeah that that's something I wouldn't do. Absolutely not. It's a bit of a random thing, but I completed the Kogu Trail, at least 99.95% of it, I think. Because I went around the mountain instead of over the mountain, that's probably the only little thing I've cheated. But, uh, actually the way around it was also partially the Kogu Trail, so... I didn't skip anything, maybe a few hundred meters, maybe. So, I'm proud of myself, I'm happy, it was one of the most beautiful trails I've ever walked. Um, the terrain itself is beautiful, um, the hike itself is very pleasant most of the times, only today was a bit boring and um, uh, near this area it's a bit boring but for the rest it's th those are very small areas so not a big problem if you look at the big picture. Accommodation fine here, you can easily wild camp here, there are plenty of hotels or that kind of stuff but unfortunately there are like, not a lot of hostels or campings for uh, people with maybe less money but the wild camping here is very good actually it's quite easy to find a spot here and if you go a little bit early in the season before may then there are probably less snakes so that's basically better and food wise most of it is fine no pro no worries at all there there are a lot of small markets in this area maybe in, in earlier in the winter maybe it's more closed but probably not a big of a problem you carry more, there are enough restaurants open for the people with money and um, so starvation will not happen here water here, also a thing I, f I find very fine you can ask people here, there are enough little markets where you can buy some water what about people, uh, very friendly, very very friendly Greek people are very nice, I only, I asked um, I asked for a lot of water around here and there was only one guy who said no so that was the first time doing the whole trip, but for the rest of the people are very helpful, very nice here. And um, the only thing was, I kind of didn't like water the snakes. It's kind of cool on the other hand, it's more adventurous, but at the same time it's more scarier. So um, yeah, that's something you have to worry about a little bit. But like I said, snakes bites, what almost happened to me, are not very common. So it's very unlikely what happened to you, but uh, yeah, just manage it just a little bit, you, n you never know. So for the rest I would give this hike a 9, really, it's my favorite hike after the Fisherman Trail so far, it's beautiful. Also the biodiversity here is amazing, all the flowers here, all the olive trees, it's it's all just so fairy tale like it's really beautiful. Also diversity in the hike itself, a little bit of mountains, a little bit of coast, a little bit of inland, a little bit of towns, it's all a great combination of everything. Just a little bit of road walking, just a few kilometers, so not bad at all. So, great and great hike, seriously. No big complaints for me. Yeah, I, I don't like mountains, but I don't count it in. Because <laughs> that's just a common thing with me. But uh, yeah, absolutely an amazing hike, absolutely.